Hi there friends, in this tutorial series, we're gonna build a space shooter game in Godot 4. We're gonna create a player controller that can move around and shoot lasers. We're gonna create two different types of enemies and an enemy spawner. We will keep track of the score and the high score. We're also gonna create a cool looking scrolling background effect using Godot's parallax background node. There's more that we're gonna cover, so let's get right into it. Okay, create a new project and let's start building this game. First, we're going to create the game scene. This is going to be a 2D scene. We're going to rename this to be the game. And let's save this. And I want my scenes inside a folder called scenes. So I'm going to create a new folder here and save my scene in there. Next up, let's set this scene to be the main scene. To do that, we can just simply run the game and pick the select current option here. This will make the game scene the main scene. And as you can see, we have a blank window here. I want this game to be like a mobile game. So I want the window size to be like this. So let's go into the project settings and fix that. We need to go into the window tab here under display. And we're going to set the viewport width to be 540 and the height to be 960. I also want the stretch mode to be canvas items. Okay, now if we run the game, we have this mobile-like aspect ratio, which I want. Great. Next up, we're gonna create a script here, and I'm gonna create some testing functionality to make our lives easier. Okay, so let's first create the script. I want my scripts inside another folder, and this will be the scripts folder. Let's create one here, and let's create the script. And in here, first, I'm going to go into the project settings again to the input map here and create a couple of input actions. The first one is going to be quit and the second one is going to be reset. I will assign the escape key to quit and the R key to reset. We're going to use this inside of the game script inside of the process function. We're going to do a check for the quit and if the quit action is pressed we simply want to quit the game so we're gonna say get tree quit else if the reset action is pressed we want to reload the current scene so this is just so that we can test the game a little bit faster when I press escape the game will quit just like here so I'm gonna press escape the game quits and when I press R the game will basically reload the current scene which we can't test yet because our scene is empty so to fix that let's start creating the player we need to create a new scene for the player so let's do that the root node is going to be a character body 2d we're gonna rename this to be the player and save this scene inside of our scenes folder. In here, I'm going to create a sprite 2D and a collision polygon 2D. For the sprite, we're going to use a texture. So let's go ahead and import our assets. I have some assets here that I prepared. These are from Kenny. There's a link in the description if you want to use the same ones. Let's drag these into the game here. And as you can see, I have audio, fonts, and textures. I'm going to take a look inside of the textures. So this playership onepng is the one that I want to use for the player. So let's drag this into the texture slot. And this looks OK. Let's instance the player inside of the game scene to get an understanding of the size of the player. I'm going to put it at the bottom here and run the game. It looks good, but it's a little too large in my opinion. So let's go back to the player scene and let's set the scale of the sprite to be point, hmm, point 0.7 maybe. Let's run the game again. I think this looks nicer. We can change this in the future if we don't like it. But for now, I'm just going to go with this. And now let's create the collision polygon. I'm going to click on it, pick the create points tool here and start creating the shape. 
We don't need to be perfect. I just want to roughly get the shape of the player here. I usually use a collision shape instead of a polygon, but for this I'm feeling like creating a little bit fancier, you know, a collision shape that is a little bit fancier. So this will do. And we also want to create a script here. But before we do that, let's click on the character body and I'm going to set the motion mode to be floating instead of grounded. So grounded is for platformer like controls and floating is for top down stuff, which is what we have. Now we can create the script. This needs to be inside of the scripts folder. And in here, we're going to make the player move. So to do that first, let's create some input actions. We're going to have four different actions, move right, move left, move up and move down. We're also going to have a shoot action in the future. So thinking ahead, let's also create this one. Right is going to be the D key, left is going to be the A key, up is going to be W and down is going to be S. Feel free to use different keys. These are just the keys that I like. Shoot is going to be space for me. Okay, now we can use these input actions and to make the player move, we're going to use the physics process function. Because the player is a character body and character body is a physics object in Gudo. And when you want to make physics objects move, you need to use physics process instead of just regular process. In here, first, we want to get the direction that we want to move in. So we're going to create a direction variable here, and this is going to be a vector two. So let's set this to be a vector two. And for the X and the Y, we're going to use a function called input dot get access. This takes in two input actions as strings. The first one is going to be the negative one. In our case, move left. The second one is going to be the positive one, which is move right in this case. We're going to do this again for the Y component of the vector two. And this time we're going to use move up and down instead of move left and right. And move up is going to be the negative one because as you know, in Godot, up is negative in the Y axis. And this line here will basically give us the direction based on which key is being pressed. Okay, I'm now going to explain this in further detail, but first let's print it to see what this looks like. I'm going to run the game. By default, we're getting zero, zero. If I press W, we're going to get zero, negative one. If I press S, we get zero, one. And if I press A, we get negative one, zero. If I press D, we get one, zero. And I can also press them at the same time as well. Okay, so what is going on here? Input.getAxis returns negative one if the first argument is pressed, the negative one, in this case, move left, and it returns positive one if the second one is pressed. So we're taking advantage of that and we're creating this vector two here called direction. Now we can use this direction to set the velocity of the character body. So we're gonna say velocity equals direction. And then we also need to do a call to move and slide to make the character body actually move. If you don't call this, this wouldn't work. But of course, direction by itself isn't enough to make the player move at a considerable speed. So we're going to create another variable here called speed. And that's going to be up here. I'm going to set this to be 300. And let's also make this an export variable. So now we're getting the direction and we're multiplying it by speed to set the velocity. And then we're calling move and slide, which will use the velocity and make the player move. Okay, let's give this a shot. Now, as you can see, when I press up, the player goes up and down, left, right. Okay, great. So we don't have to print the direction anymore. This is working. And finally, I want to get a reference to the player from the game script. And to do that, I'm going to go into the player node here, go to the node tab next to the inspector groups. And in here, I'm going to add the player to a group called player. Now I'm going to go back to the game script. And inside of here, I'm going to create the ready function. 
I'm also going to create a variable up here called player and let's set this to be null. And at the start of the game, inside of the ready function here, I'm going to say player equals get tree, get first node in group, and this will take in a group name, and I'm going to say player here. So this call will basically look at all the nodes in the game and find the ones that have the group player and return the first one. In our case, we're only going to have a single player at any given time. So this will always return the player to us. I usually don't do it this way. I usually just go uh, in the game scene here inside of the script. I usually just create a variable up here like on ready var player and just set the player to be like this. But this is also an alternative way to get the player. So this is just a different way of doing the same thing basically. And we could also say assert player isn't null. And this assert will basically create an error if the player is not found basically. And as a final thing, we can go back inside of the game scene here. We can create a marker node here. And I'm gonna rename this to be the spawn position, player spawn position. And I'm gonna put this at the center here. So let's say the X position is 270 and Y is 850. And then we can use this inside of the game script to set the player's position. So even if we had the player somewhere in like stupid in the scene like here, we can automatically set it to be at the spawn position at the start here by first creating a reference to the spawn position. And then after we get the player, we can simply say player.globalPosition equals player spawn position dot global position. Now if I run the game, even though the player is up here, it's going to start here. So that's just a cautionary measure to make sure we start the player at the position that we want. Okay, great. So we have the game scene. We did some setup. We also created the player scene and also we created the player's movement code. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn more about Godot, I have a course for beginners where I teach everything you need to know in a much slower pace. So if that's interesting to you, check the link in the description. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.